but you might not see the beauty that's in front of your own face. So let's go get a coffee from the shop for seven bucks. If you're after contemplation, let me tell you you're in luck, cause you're at Contemplative Coffee Corner. It's a place for deep discussion. Too bad nothing rhymes with corner, that's right. Grab your MacBook, bring a mug, and open mind. Cause a little contemplation does a lot for humankind. Welcome back to Contemplative Coffee Corner. I'm Austin, this isn't coffee, and today's subject of contemplation is... Voodoo. What is voodoo? What role does it play in our everyday lives? How can you use dark energies and mysterious hexes to improve your workplace efficiency? To answer the first question, Urban Dictionary defines voodoo as, colloquially, any strange ritual or behavior, especially one meant to do harm to others. See also, voodoo doll. I think we will be seeing also, if you know what I'm saying. You get a little nudge nudge, you get a little, yeah, give, me a, give me a hint. To use it in a sentence, Darlene, angry that her hubby ran off with a waitress from a pachinko parlor, made a voodoo doll of him in a B-rate movie sort of revenge. Lovely stuff. And now, to kick off some hardcore contemplation, I'd like to play for you my unplugged cover of Stevie Wonder's Superstition. Now if you'll just give me a second to plug in here, just a little, a little bit of... Very superstitious Writings on the wall Very superstitious Ladders about to fall Thirteen month old baby he Broke the looking glass Seven years of bad luck You good things in your past When you believe in things That you don't understand Then you suffer Superstition ain't the way Scariest thing about that is how bad I am at playing that song <laughs> And now that we've had a chance to have some deep internal reflection about voodoo, allow me to share a tale of an encounter I had with voodoo just the other day. Now this is real, I didn't make this up for the script, okay? This happened to me. Alright? So it all started when I was visiting my local McDonald's. Everything was going great. Birds were chirping, the sun was shining, and the US housing crisis happened so long in the past that it was unreasonable to be bumming people out on the day to day. So, I roll up to the window, and I make my order, like normal. And then, on the five meter drive, from the ordering station to the payment window, it's five seconds, it's no time. You step on the gas, you're there, you're right there. Blood starts to drip out of my nose. And I'm not talking like a little bit of blood, it's not like a little, immediately. My nasal dams break, and blood floods out of my face, covering my chin instantly. It's nothing. It's right away. And I roll up to the payment window, and the guy's too busy to see, you know, he's got a lot of stuff going on. It's a busy job when you work at McDonald's, I assume. And, uh, so he didn't look at me. He just reached out his hand for the card, and I handed it to him, and, uh, he swiped it in. And it was only when he handed it back to me, and looked over to say, have a nice day, sir, that he saw the terror that was my blood-filled car. Uh, and by this time, I was trying to stop it, I was trying to maybe plug my nose, and I grabbed the card with one hand, and I plugged it with the other. It was terrible. It was a really bad situation. And I was already pulling away. I was hoping he wasn't going to see me, so I was driving away, and he's like, oh my god, can I get you some napkins? I was like, yes, that would be great, but I was already, like, I already drove past it. He couldn't have given me any napkins then, like, what help would that have been? So I'm up at the second window now, waiting to receive my food, and this dude, he notices right away. He's looking right at me, 
and uh, he maybe was not the most well-suited person at this McDonald's to perform this job. Specifically, the job of delivering food to a guy covered in blood. Uh, he was one of those dudes that uh, is not fond of seeing, you know, people juice all over uh, people's faces. And so he starts freaking out. He's like, oh my god, oh my god, manager! And he, he calls the manager over and he's like, what do I do? How can I, how can I give this man any food without getting blood on my hands? Like, that's stupid. How many times do you, like, get your food from somebody at a fast food restaurant? and like rub your hands all over theirs. You don't, there's no hand-to-hand -hand contact. They hold the bag out, you grab it, done. It's weird if you touch hands, it wouldn't have been like a problem. Uh, in any case, he goes out and he grabs like the whole napkin dispenser, dumps the whole thing out into his arms and like throws them in my car. So I'm like frantically trying to wipe the blood up so that he feels comfortable handing me my food. And the manager goes out and gets one of their like trademark McDonald's wash napkins or whatever washcloths and uh, he gets it wet and he hands it out to me and he says you can keep this this is yours now and I'm like yes thank you I'm sure that <laughs> I'm sure I might have thought you wanted it back while I'm wiping all this blood off of my face I'm sure you wanted it back after this thank you very much and they hand me my food and uh, I thought that was the end of it. I pulled out, and sure enough, as soon as I got away from that McDonald's, uh, my bloody nose stopped. What a cool time. What a cool time for, for that to just happen. And that wasn't the end of the experience, because uh, that McDonald's was like right next to my work. I go there all the time, and I thought that like it wouldn't be a deal if I went there the next day. I thought, you know, people would be cool and not bring that up again, but... Uh, what actually ended up happening is that I walked in and everybody there like kind of stopped and looked over. And I'm aware, some of this could be in my imagination, you know? A little trauma happens when you bleed all over a McDonald's, you know? You get, you get the feeling people are watching you. But I'm pretty sure that like stories had gone round, you know? I saw some whispers happening and the dude at the counter was the same dude who handed me my food before. So he, he saw the whole ordeal happen. He was the, he was affected by it, you know, second most, sec, second to me. And uh, he's like, hello, sir, how, how can I help you? He was like afraid. Did he, he like maybe thought I was going to start bleeding again out of nowhere? Somehow? Maybe I control it? Maybe I bled on him on purpose? Possible. Possible reasons. Uh, in any case, uh, I order my food, and the guy who comes up to hand it to me says, Here you are, sir. Have a nice day. Is your nose feeling any better? I was like, oh my god. That was the worst thing that anyone could have possibly said to me at that, at that moment. That McDonald's was, like, ruined. I couldn't go there for, like, a month. So, you know, that was, that was good times. And, uh, how this all ties in is that that experience was so terrible that the only reasonable explanation for that happening to me is that somebody cursed me, obviously, right? I bled all over a McDonald's and the, something so awful, something so absolutely terrible can only happen to someone when, like, when, when you are hexed, when someone voodoos all over you, you know? What other explanation is there? Well, that wraps up this episode of Contemplative Coffee Corner. Anyway, here's Wonderwall. Today is gonna be the day that they're gonna send it back to you. By now, you should have somehow realized what you gotta do. I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now.